Hi, Achim here from Interspace Explorers. Today, I want to start a new series um, and show you a little bit of expedition gear. Um, because a lot of people ask about the, uh, these things, um, especially for the REC projects. Um, I mentioned the side scan sauna, magnetometer, the ROV, etc. And uh, there's actually some new stuff coming in for uh, a new project that uh, I'm going to start in April. And uh, so I thought it's a good idea to start. And today I will show you the ROV and uh, assemble it for you. And um, as you're living on a river, um, we do a little bit of a test. I haven't tried that before, so this will be a real test. Uh, we'll actually throw it in the river and see if we can find something there. So visibility is not that good. I'm not sure if I'm doing this in this first video or maybe I'll do it in an update. So today I just want to show you the unit itself and what it can do and how it's set up, etc. So, um, what we have here is the case uh, of the unit. Uh, what you see here is uh, the control cable. The unit's capable of diving to 200 meters and it's a 200 meter cable. So of course if you dive to 200 meters with it, I mean it's straight down and then you can't do much. Uh, but if you dive, for example, to 150 meters, you still have a 50 meter radius. Um, and obviously the cable doesn't go down and then 50 meters, but uh, you get the idea. So um, the main reason I bought it is to avoid deep checkout dives. So you have something on the sonar and you're like, hmm, can be, can be something different. Um, especially on the, on the last rec search, I had a couple of these things and you, I mean, if I can avoid um, 100, 120 meter dives just to figure out, oh, that's a rocket, not a submarine, um, then uh, it's obviously safer, nicer, less cost uh, intensive if I can send down the ROV and see what it is and only if it is what I'm searching for, I can finally do the dive. And then obviously there's stuff that I'm still interested in that is uh, at a depth that I don't want to dive. Um, and then the ROV is a great option to um, visit these places and at least get an idea. All right, so um, da -da, there it is. Um, so the unit is extremely modular, so you can really choose what you want to do with it and um, you can switch back and forth, so if there's, there's a, a sampler that way you can take uh, mud samples or water samples. Um, I actually <coughs> have it with this arm, uh, you show, I'll show you later, so uh, it can grab things and hold it, and so you can yeah, pick something up in the water. It always has a 4K camera, um, so the Transmission quality is awesome. It's yeah, like watching a, a YouTube video or something like that. Um, I will show you that later as well. Um, I use it with the phone as the screen. Um, there is an additional monitor which is really big. So if, if you use it stationary, like from from a very big boat or from shore, and you use it for uh, use it for an uh, extended period of time, I mean you can literally sit on a table and have a big monitor in front of you which was not practical for me because I normally use it from a small boat and uh, I wanted it as small as possible also for travel purposes. Uh, so I use um, the small remote control. So if, if you're flying a drone uh, like a DJI or Mini or something like that, I mean, it's exactly the same concept, right? I mean, you put your phone in here, um, there's the connection cables and then, um, yeah, the classical remote control as you know it from also um, scale models or something like that. So very simple, very intuitive and um, you will see this later in use and uh, that's, that's what I use as I said because I normally use it from a small boat. And um, yeah, I would say we just uh, assemble it and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here we have the unit. As you can see, uh, very small, very lightweight, and they did a great job um, the way they set it up. So um, all the accessories that are available can be added in a, in a very easy way. Um, in case you want to check the unit on the internet, it's a Chasing M2 Pro Max. 
Um, it's a very cool company. Uh, they actually produce them in, in various sizes and uh, quality levels, so to speak. So there is a consumer model, it's an advanced model, and a professional one. Um, yeah, so this is the battery pack. Um, and that gets simply plugged in here, so you cannot put it in the wrong way. And uh, there's a couple of O-rings here to seal it. So it's really made um, in a way that you can, yeah, like use it in the field, as I like to say. So once it's clicked in, you basically just. Click it in here, close it, and the battery is in, and you're basically powered up. So you have two uh, video lights, and um, you could extend these so they're uh, further out, but then obviously it's easier to get uh, cord and cable, fishing net, or whatever um, you have where you where you use it. So, and then you have your eight thrusters. One, two, three, four, and the same on the front. So the thing can maneuver in really tight spaces and it's very, very controllable. And then on front you have the 4K camera. And um, as you can see, when the camera comes a little bit closer, here you have all these connection points where you go into the electronics. So here's the, the light cable um, that is connected here. The thrusters obviously are all connected. So also when you're somewhere and you have an issue like one of these thrusters breaks down or, or catches line or whatever, you can easily take one of these thrusters out, disconnect it, put a new one in. I mean, if you have spares with you and you're ready to uh, to work again right so this is um, it's really nice and um, so that brings me to this nice piece here um, and I'll show you how this is uh, connected so you get it to the side and then You see these two connectors go here and then you get it in here, you lock it and the thing is connected and now we obviously need to connect it to the unit uh, with the electronics and there's uh, the cable for this, we check, I need my glasses. Um, like the same uh, that you know from your underwater strobe, from your camera, it's the same connector, there's this o-ring, put this in here, so and then the other side goes here, So everything's connected. And now we actually need my phone um, to connect it with the unit. And uh, so we have to switch cameras. And then I'll show you how this thing works. Alright, so this is the connection to the surface. That's the cable. And uh, so the nice thing here is that this is um, has electronics in it as well. So when the unit dives or moves forward, it actually actually takes cable out, and when uh, the unit's coming back, the cable is winding up automatically. So you don't have to sit there and wind the cable or anything. This is like fully automatic. 
and as I said, it's 200 meters. And um, I'll show you how this is done. Check the o ring. That's also the charging plug. And very important, you obviously want to secure this. So you don't want to pull it on the cable. So there's obviously some wire in here. And uh, now it's set up. And uh, there is a connection to the remote control, of course. And uh, if I remember correct, these are the same. sure that there's no dirt on these o-rings. I mean this doesn't go in the water but nevertheless all right so now we have the setup ready um, as I said it's only my phone needs to go in there which I'll show you in a minute and then the unit will be ready to operate. So uh, we switch that camera right now and I uh, will make a dry run, which you would do anyway, before you put it in the water. So you make sure all the functions are there. There's no bad connection or anything, or a male function of one of the thrusters or anything like that, or a bad battery. And then we go down to the river and see how this thing works. Okay, so um, here's the unit. And um, it's now connected, as you can see when I move the ROV, you can see the camera. It actually, I cannot um, use the thrusters on dry land, they only work once it's wet. Um, I don't know how good you can see that on the video, but you can see here is like the compass bearing and um, here I can start recording, I have settings, I can switch between um, filming and uh, still photos and so on. Um, there's actually water temperature, depth, uh, if I have the lights on or off and um, here I can actually see the uh, position of the ROV in the water. So here you actually see the, the claw in action, so this is... Um, where I activate it and uh, this is how you open and close it. We are here at the river. Um, the visibility I guess is pretty terrible. We're going to check it out. Um, so I have a little bit of slack in the cable here. Um, unit is working and uh, and connect it and I'll put it in the water now and then we'll see what we can do. So so I switched it on now and I so we've been uh, on the river and that was a complete disaster. The visibility is so bad that I cannot even see the claw from the, uh, from the ROV. So um, it's actually here, you can see I disassembled it completely again. Um, drying it off is pretty much of a pain. Um, you can see that there's all these small errors where you really have no access. The handles actually f kind of fill with water, and uh, you can you just saw this. So it takes quite a while um, till it is completely dry again. That's really my only con concern, or my only the only down downside on the unit, in my opinion. Um, and uh, so the 
uh, there will be a second part where I'll show you the unit in the water. Um, there's a small lake nearby where I sometimes go with the oxygen rebreather. So maybe <clears throat> I do it there. Or actually, um, some of the water rescue uh, units here in Munich, um, they have the same unit, so maybe we can do something there together, like one unit's filming the other one, or we put a diver in the water, something like that. So I'll make a second part of this and show you the unit performing underwater and then probably also figure out how I can uh, transfer the video from the screen of my phone uh, into that video so you see like what I see when I run the unit. So, but I have to figure out how that works. Um, if one of you has an idea, please feel free to contact me. Other than that, I hope you liked this. Uh, if you have questions, comments, please put them in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.